Our guest teacher tonight, Zach Bodner, is known to many of you through his incredible work as the CEO of the Oshman Family JCC in Palo Alto. But before joining the JCC, Zach served for 14 years as the Pacific Northwest Regional Director of APAC. He holds a master's degree in philosophy of religion and theology from Claremont Graduate University and a bachelor's degree from Yale University where he played varsity soccer, probably the most important part of his bio. Additionally, he studied at Hebrew University in Jerusalem, or Sameach Yeshiva, and Stanford Business School. Zach is a seeker, a moth storyteller, a TEDx presenter, a community organizer, and now he is also the author of a new book titled Why Do Jewish? A Manifesto for 21st Century Jewish Peoplehood. Zach, we're thrilled that you are with us here tonight to celebrate Shabbat, and we are looking forward to learning from you. My pleasure. Shabbat Shalom. Are you going to stand there? Sure, why not? All right. <laughs> Is this okay? Of course. Uh, what a beautiful, warm introduction, uh, bio. Thank you, Rabbi Morrison, for inviting me here, for, for your colleagueship, for your friendship. It's wonderful to have you in our community. Um, and to our other colleagues, to Cantor Spall, beautiful service. It's wonderful to hear your voice. It just brings so much love and warmth and spirituality here. To my colleagues, my friends, Rabbi Heath, Rabbi John, I did. I don't have any more latkes, but I am wearing the Hanukkah socks. So just in case, there's a little bit of a remnant there. Um, and he, he did a beautiful ceremony, conversion ceremony for a friend of mine just a couple of weeks ago, and just did a beautiful job. And uh, and John, I'm just thrilled that you're reading my book and not just your wife's cookbooks. That there's other books in your repertoire. So thank you. It's uh, it's wonderful to be here. And um, and to my own colleague Mark Holtzman, the former president of the board here. My, uh, my friend and colleague at the JCC and his wife, Marla, thank you for joining us for your first in-person Shabbat tonight. I understand you're here usually on Zoom, but um, thank you for keeping me company up here. And a big mazel tov to Maya and the Bromberg family. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this moment. This is really special, and it's great that you're able to do it in person. I had my son's bar mitzvah on Zoom during COVID, so it's great that you're able to kind of be here with family and friends, and yasher koach to you. I know it'll be a, a great day and a great... It's celebration. So, yes, as, as Rabbi Morrison said, my book is called Why Do Jewish, which may not be proper English, but don't tell my mom the English teacher, right? But, but it's about the doing for me, and it's about the seeking, and it's about the searching. And, and in my mind, all of us should be able to answer this question of why. Why are we doing this? Why are we holding on to this tradition? Why are you here on a Friday night, on a Saturday, when there's so many other fun things you could be doing? You have to be able to answer that question of why for yourself and for your kids and for your grandkids, for your community. You have to be able to understand why this is so important, why so many millions of dollars are being pumped into synagogues and JCCs and federations and institutions to, to pass on Jewish survival, Jewish continuity, Jewish peoplehood. Why? Do you know why for yourself? It's worth asking that question. For me, I started asking this question back in high school, and I remember very clearly I grew up in Southern California in a, in a town called Claremont, just outside of Los Angeles. And despite it being in LA and a college town, I didn't have many Jewish friends, uh, but two of my closest friends were Jewish, one of whom was barely Jewish, if you, if you consider kind of observance of halachot and uh, as Jewish or not, you know, that's not how we see it these days, whether you feel it in your soul or not, or you feel, but you know, back then we talked about whether you uh, were very Jewish or not, and this was a guy who, who brought home a non-Jewish girlfriend one day in high school, and his father flipped out on him, just flipped, it was like a Tevye moment out of, uh, you know, Fiddler on the Roof, I thought he was going to tear his clothes and disown him, he was so passionately frustrated with his son for bringing home a, a non-Jewish girl, and I didn't understand it, I really was like, I didn't understand the hypocr hypocrisy of him, I, I mean, this was a kid who, we went to Yom Kippur services one year, and he came home and ate a ham and cheese sandwich afterwards. I mean, I'm not kidding. Like, he, he really did. That's not an exaggeration. And by the way, I have no judgment on people's eating or treif or not. Like, I have my own kind of weird kashru. We, we kind of keep kosherish in the house, like no treif. But outside the house, somehow lobster becomes kosher. You know, that's just the way we do it. But, you know, growing up, it wasn't that way. Growing up, I knew very clearly my, my parents had much stricter rules. You know, no pepperoni pizza in the house. Outside the house, it was okay. But... You know, I, we knew we were Jewish growing up. My dad, you know, no German shepherd we weren't allowed to own. Like, 
no German car. He had, this is my father. I, you know, it took him years to accept that his Audi was not a Swedish car, by the way. It really did. But like we knew we were Jewish. I remember this story, my, my father, who didn't eat shellfish or pork products, we went out one, um, one night to dinner and he ordered the lobster bisque. And we all kind of looked at him, shocked. And he, he quickly says to the waiter, hold the lobster. And we're kind of like, <laughs> like what, what do you mean? And my dad's like, you know, the little lobster garnish on the top. You can leave that off. Like, so we, we had a funny way of keeping kosher, but we knew very much that we were Jewish. You know, my parents led one of the very first BBYO team tours to Israel. Um, we were very Zionistic. We did Shabbat dinners on Friday night. Uh, but my friend wasn't, you know, very Jewish, and he brings home this non-Jewish girlfriend, and his father gets so upset with him, and I just didn't understand the hypocrisy. It's like, if it was that important to you, be able to explain it to your son. Be able to show him that it matters so much that this is why your friend, like, but if, it, if we care so much, we should be able to hold on to this tradition regardless of who we spend our lives with. Regardless, if it's that important to us, should it really matter if the person we marry is gonna continue this tradition with us or not, or endorse it with us, or be a part of it with us? For me, this is why it led to the formulation of why do Jewish, as opposed to why be Jewish. In my mind, that's the moment we're in in the 21st century. When I started researching and writing the book, there were four books out there with the title, Why Be Jewish? There are none with the title, Why Do Jewish? But in my mind, it's really about the doing today. Like, I really don't appreciate when somebody says, no, 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 don't worry, it's the thought that counts. You know this, this term of art, this, it's the thought that counts. It's really somebody trying to make you feel better when you're too lazy to really do something. Like, oh, yeah, it was your birthday. I thought about getting you a card. I just didn't have time. No, do something, right? Just make that effort of the doing. It's, it's not enough to just be, to just think, it's OK, it's fine. but. It's about the tachlis. You know this word tachlis? Have you heard this word? It's a great Yiddish word. The Israelis have adopted it into the modern Hebrew nomenclature. There's no equivalent in English. But tachlis is like getting down to brass tacks. When you're sitting in a meeting and there's too many people to, talking and talking, you just kind of like, what's the tachlis? Let's, let's get down to business. It's a great word. Feel free to use it whenever you want. You can even use it improperly. If, like John Hamm and his Yiddish during the last Curb Your Enthusiasm episode. Anyway, tachlis, it's a great word. So in my mind, it's about the doing. There's, there's a member of our board of directors at the JCC here in Palo Alto. She's Japanese. She's not Jewish, she didn't convert. Her husband's Jewish because he was born to Jewish parents. But he doesn't do a whole lot Jewishly. It's, but it's our friend who's on the board of directors at the JCC. She's the one who cares about her Jewishness. She's the one who's schlepping her kids to JCC preschool. Now she's taking her oldest to, to Hebrew school uh, preparation. She, she's actually leading our mission to Israel this summer. She's the one who makes the Shabbat dinners, or Friday nights. She's part of our family. She, she's the doing Jewish. Nobody's going to say to me that she's less Jewish than her husband just because of who her, her mother was or because she didn't choose to convert. In my mind, that's the doing. That's the tachlis. So the epigraph of my book is a quote from David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister of Israel, which is, words without deeds are nothing. Words without deeds are nothing. I love that. Right? So, in this book, which is divided into kind of three chunks, so the first chunk is why do Jewish, the second is what is Jewish, and then the third is how to do Jewish. And then the kind of culmination, the how, I've used this word tachlis to develop a new framework for what I think is important about doing Jewish in the 21st century. And it's an acronym. There's a poster out there you can look at later. I brought bookmarks for those of you who haven't had a chance to get the book yet, um, which kind of lays it out. It's not a pitch or anything, right? It's a subtle pitch. If you have, you can put a review on Amazon. That's always nice. No. Um, tachlis. So seven letters. And this is how I think about doing Jewish in the 21st century. You could pick one of these. You could pick two, three. You could do all of them. But picking and doing some of this is what will help you connect to your Jewishness. So it will help you find meaning in your life. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're looking for. We're all looking for meaning and connection. Those two things. Most of you are probably here tonight because you're finding meaning in this beautiful service. You're finding meaning in your community. You're finding connection to the people around you, a sense of belonging. That's why we connect the way we do. And I think engaging in tachlis is another way of making Jewish life meaningful, relevant, and joyous for the next century or more. So here's what it stands for. The T is for tikkun olam. You know this term, tikkun olam, repairing the world. Right? So many of us define our Jewishness by trying to make the world a better place. And it doesn't mean we have to do it by engaging in Jewish social action causes. Environmental justice, social justice, racial justice, 
issues on poverty, all of these things, if you're engaged in making the world a better place, and many of our young people today, that's how they define their Jewishness, by trying to repair the world. That's a core Jewish value. That's a perfect way for showing your Jewishness. And just, even if it's for a non-Jewish cause, make sure the people around you understand that you're doing this because it's part of your Jewish soul, your Jewish neshama, that you want to make the world a better place. That's the T in Tachlis, Tikkun Olam. The A is art and culture. How many people do we know connect to their Jewishness because of art? They love the paintings of Chagall. They love the, the stories of Shalom Aleichem or the comedy of Sarah Silverman. Or maybe they just like eating Jewish food, right? Bagels and lox, pastrami and kanish, or, or you know, there's also Yemenite Jewish food. I don't mean to be so Ashkenazi-centric, right? There's, there's so many different ways of connecting to your Jewishness. I actually get offended when people say, oh, they're just bagels and lox Jews. Have you heard this kind of like they're looking down on people? No. That's a great way of connecting to your Jewishness. It's a, it's a very easy, easy portal of entry. It's very soft. There's no intimidation. You don't have to know Hebrew to know that you kind of <laughs> like bagels and lox. Now, hopefully, that's a portal of entry that kind of allows you to, to do more with your Jewishness. But that's the A, is the art and the culture, music, food, film, books. The C in Tachlis is for community. That's what you're all doing here tonight. That's what you do so well. One of the first or second commandments in the Torah is it's not good for humans to be alone. We are about community. You have to daven in a minion, right? You, you can't lift up Maya on a chair doing the horror with one person, right? It's, it's been hard on the Zoom to find real community, but we've been very creative. We do community well. We do community well. That's the C. The H in Tachlis is for holidays and rituals. We also do holidays well. We do the Jewish calendar well. Holidays and rituals. Finding that way to connect to the calendar to the life cycle, the, the, the cycles of the seasons, finding the way to connect to the world around us by celebrating, by sometimes mourning, right? And, and finding those holidays that speak to you and finding modern meaning in them. You know, many of us will find a, put up a sukkah during Sukkot, and, and that's a way for, yes, we commemorate having been, having been wandering in the wilderness and having put up these temporary dwellings, but I like to think of it as a, as a way to, show gratitude for the roof over our head and the food on our table and the things that are so tentative in life, right? So holidays and rituals are an important way of doing Jewish. That's the H. The L is for learning. We're the people of the book, after all. Learning. It's an important way to figure out how we're connected. Not just the Torah and the Talmud, but that's part of it. It's also the modern Jewish canon, right? There's so many wonderful books out there, so many modern texts, whether it's the Jonathan Sachs's or the Abraham Joshua Heschel's that Rabbi John quoted tonight. The, you know, there's... Emma Lazarus, there's so much Jewish wisdom out there. Learn it. Get serious about it. Have fun with it. There's a Jewish film club that you can start, a Jewish music club. But that's all part of what it means to learn. And in this era of doing yourself DIY, you've heard this term DIY, do it yourself Jewish, we have to get a little bit more knowledgeable so that when we're doing it at home or when we're doing it on Zoom, we know a little bit more about what we're doing. So the learning is important. The I and Tachlis is for Israel finding a way to connect to our ancient homeland, recognizing that we live in this historic moment. This is the first time ever, 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 ever in the history of the Jewish people. This is the first time ever where there's a strong Jewish homeland and a strong Jewish diaspora here in North America. We're blessed. We're blessed to be living in this moment. And we must find a way to connect with Israel. And that doesn't mean always supporting Israel no matter what they do. It means engaging. You know, to be Jewish means to wrestle with God anyway. We can wrestle. But to have a relationship with Israel is important to what it means to be Jewish. And finally, the S in Tachlis is for Shabbat and spirituality. What you doing tonight? Shabbat. Echad Am famously said, it's not so much that the Jews have kept Shabbat, but that Shabbat has kept the Jews. Shabbat is a central part. And find your own way of doing Shabbat. Tiffany Schlein is this great author who wrote a book called 24-6. And for her family, it's about unplugging. It's about tech-free Shabbat, right? It's not necessarily about not turning off the lights. It's not necessarily about not getting in the car, but it's about finding your own way of unplugging. And right, this was so important for me during COVID. I don't know about you, but for my wife and I, we had an ongoing joke. We didn't know if we were working from home or living at work, right? Like it, it, it all started to blend together. It, and, and because you just like when you're, you don't have something to do, you just pop open the laptop, you get back to work, and one day just bled into the next. And we finally had to have some separation. In, in, in talking to my friend Tiffany, she's like, why don't you try doing so? Because we were not Shomer Shabbos. I'm not observant. And, and we started doing some like unplugging, tech-free Shabbats. And it's a great Jewish value. We have a lot of non-Jewish families at our preschool, right, Mark? And I can't tell you how many of them come back and they go, oh, we love this idea of Shabbat. 
Now we as a family, we're going to have Friday night family dinners. Right? Well, we're going to unplug, we're going to engage with each other, put our cell phones away. Like, it's a great thing. It's probably the best religious invention of all time, this idea of Shabbat. And then the idea of spirituality. You're here. You're praying. You're singing. That works for a lot of people. For some people, it doesn't. For some people, it's Zen Buddhist meditation. It's, it's finding a way of connecting. So this idea of engaging in tachlis. Those are the seven things that I feel like if we find a way to engage in at least one of them, we can make Jewish life meaningful, relevant, and joyous. We can rejuvenate it. We can make it for the young people today. And I don't know, you'll have to tell me, Maya. You're about to embark, hopefully, on the next part of your Jewish journey. Hopefully, the bat mitzvah isn't the culmination. Hopefully, this is just that next step. But if Maya and her colleagues and her friends and her contemporaries have to say, I have to choose between confirmation and going on, or I've got this really cool soccer team, or I've got dance, or I've got art, it's a tough choice if, if the Jewish part is not that fun and not that engaging. If we make it fun and engaging, then it's going to be an even tougher choice, by the way, because she's going to say, I love this. I love this part of my Jewish identity. And I'm going to want to continue to do this. And we owe it to Maya and all of her contemporaries. We owe it to ourselves to be able to answer this question of why. So I'll just end with a final quick story. My father, of blessed memory, who passed away and was in many ways the inspiration for me for writing this book, um, when he passed away seven years ago, I wanted to say Kaddish with my brother, who lived in Colorado. And the rabbis were like, you, know, you can't really do it virtually that way. It doesn't, it's not kosher, you know? Um, you have to be in the same room. You can't even be in a room around the corner, right, if you're going to follow the real rules. But OK, whatever. Like, I still did it with my brother. Who cares if it's kosher or not? Again, I'm not an observant Orthodox Jew. But I still felt a little part of me was kind of like, that's a real bummer. You know, I remember saying, like, what about Jews who live in Juneau, Alaska? Like, the middle of nowhere, Bozeman, Montana, where you can't find a minion. How do you, how do you make a minion to say Kaddish for a parent if there's no one around? Fast forward to last year during COVID, and my son had a Zoom bar mitzvah. And we did it online. And it was beautiful, and it was so joyous. And we were able to have friends and family from Israel and all over the country that wouldn't have been able to come in participate. We were in the very, very first Zoom bar mitzvahs, where there'd only been one that we'd seen beforehand. So we got to experiment. We got to have all sorts of musicians, and like, it just became a big, joyous, fun thing. And of course, during COVID, there were rabbis all over, even in Israel, going, ah, maybe we can daven and, and do the high holidays on Zoom. Maybe it's not so bad to be virtual anymore. Technology's changing things, and we have to be able to keep up. And that's what the 21st century is all about. And Jewishness and our identity and making it joyous and meaningful and relevant has to be part of that equation, too. So I will say to you all, thank you for having me. Shabbat shalom, mazal tov to you and your family, and good Shabbos.